Hey guys, well, I had a pretty nice win today. Uh, the game was definitely not perfect, but I think there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of interesting moments, uh, and I, I definitely played well for for the most part, uh, except for the opening. <laughs> okay, well, the game started um, d4 knight f6. I was playing uh, international master Yevgeny uh, Zana in here from Israel, um, who is like over 2,500. So I assume he is going to be a, a grandmaster and in short time. Um, he played the Grunfeld, which I wasn't fully expecting, but I did want to come and play uh, a specific sideline, just because I felt like it would be a good choice for today's game. Uh, I've never played E3 before, uh, so I you know, was pretty sure he wouldn't have looked at this um, today, and since he plays uh, different stuff with black, I think he actually hasn't even played the Grunfeld in a couple of years. I imagine he hasn't looked at the line in, in quite some time. Uh, so I figured it, it might be a nice kind of like surprise weapon. Um, well, I think it was a decent choice, but I <laughs> didn't end up getting anything uh, regardless. Uh, except I did manage to, to make him spend a little bit of time in the opening. So that was, that was definitely a plus because later on uh, he was definitely in, in some serious time trouble. Um, so c takes d5, knight takes d5, and bishop c4. This is kind of the line I was uh, hoping to play. Uh, knight takes c3, b takes c3, c5, castles. And, I mean, white really doesn't get anything here. Uh, but the, the problem nowadays is that you don't really get anything uh, in any line of the Grunfeld. It's just <laughs> theoretically rock-solid opening. So I, I think the modern wisdom is kind of... Um, to try out different lines, try to surprise your opponent, and, and try to get some kind of typical position where um, at least, you know, like, your, your opponent won't be prepared to the teeth with, like, a stockfish analysis. Um, so, yeah, the idea was just to get something playable. Now white has a solid center. At some point, my plan is to try and play e4 and, and get the, the space advantage. Uh, and we're going to get, like, a typical Grunfeld position um, where... I think both sides are, are pretty happy with their, their setup. So queen e2, knight c6, uh, rook d1, b6. This is all standard stuff, and I, I think we're even following uh, the main line theory. Uh, and here I played rook b1. Um, so I think the rook is just well placed here. Now the pawn on c3 isn't as hanging. Uh, if black takes it with the bishop, won't be hitting the rook. So now white is, in some cases, potentially wanting to like advance with, with d5, uh, though probably not right away because of knight a5. Um, in any case, the, the rook is improved, and again, something like uh, bishop b7, my idea is to play e4. And then my other bishop probably comes out to e3, or maybe even g5. And I think it's a pretty healthy position uh, for both sides. It's definitely very playable. Um, instead, he kind of surprised me here with bishop f5, which was uh, honestly my, let's say, my first move out of book. Um, and yeah, I wasn't exactly sure how to react to this because I didn't really want to play e4. I think the idea was to induce this move from black's point of view and then play bishop g4, and, and now my d4 pawn is under a lot of pressure. I can't push d5 because uh, I'll get hit with knight e5. Um, and if I play bishop e3, then c takes d4, c takes d4, and I wasn't sure exactly what the idea was for black during the game, but <laughs> something felt very suspicious to me about this position. And yeah, checking it afterwards, it turns out black has e5, which is uh, quite strong. Uh, if I go d5, he comes in with an d4, I have to take, e takes d4, and uh, well, black is totally happy. I mean, maybe not better, but certainly zero problems. Um, so yeah, this is kind of an annoying move, just like hitting my rook, and uh, I really should have checked it before the game, but, you know, you can't check everything, and so I, <laughs> yeah, I totally missed it. Um, now I could also play a move like bishop d3, which I think I probably should have done. Um, this allows a trade of bishops, and, I don't know, during the game I just kind of felt like this position is equal and, and very healthy for black, um, and... And that, has, that is true, I think that's an objective assessment, black is like totally fine, uh, but nevertheless this is probably the way to go. I mean white is also okay and we can definitely uh, keep keep the game going here. Um, and yeah, I, I think I saw one game by uh, Grandmaster Tregubov, 
who plays this line quite frequently, and, and he won a game. Uh, I think it was like a rapid game, but nevertheless, okay, playable position. Objectively, uh, that's what I should have done. Instead, I decided to play rook b2. Um, I really just felt like, okay, this move looks very awkward, just putting the rook here, but in the future, I mean, if I am able to play, like, let's say, h3 and e4, uh, and kick the bishop out of f5, and then I, I can definitely regroup, especially if black is ever making this capture with c takes d4, c takes d4, uh, my rook will be ready to come to c2, and bishop can go to d3 or b3, and, and my setup will, will start to make sense. So I felt like this is one of those awkward rook moves that you can sometimes make if you have like a clear plan of improving your rook in, in the near future. And my bishop on c1, I think it doesn't really mind, because eventually, again, I just want to play e4 uh, and get the bishop out that way. Um, so, black here played uh, knight a5, which I think is a, a good move. Now, I don't have a lot of squares for my bishop. I already rejected bishop d3, so it, it wouldn't make sense to play this move now. Um, so I decided to play bishop a6, which I felt was reasonable just controlling the c8 square. Uh, and then bishop e4. Um, and a good move, because uh, he's stopping me from playing e4 and... Now it's like very difficult for white to actually get my bishop on c1 out. So at this point, I was actually already worried about being worse here. Um, because I felt like I'm, I'm not getting my development. I didn't get e4 in. Um, all of black's pieces are in the game. And uh, yeah, it's not clear what I'm doing. Um, okay, but I decided on knight g5 eventually just to attack the bishop and try to get e4 in. Um, but of course my 9 on g5 is going to be a little bit floaty and can always get hit with like h6 or something. Um, so he plays bishop c6, which I think makes sense. He could have also played bishop b7, maybe this was a little bit more solid. Um, because if I go back here with bishop d3, he can hit me with e5. And uh, I think black is actually doing really well here. I mean, this is why the 9 on f3 is important to, to prevent this e5 break. But here I think black is doing great. Um, so after bishop b7, I'm not sure what I would have done during the game, um, but perhaps I would be forced to take knight takes b7 and then play this position where, again, it's like black is most likely totally fine, just like no weaknesses, he's already traded off a couple of pieces, so the lack of space is not an issue and his rooks can like come to the center next and, and yeah, just easy game for black, but it should be close to equal. Okay, instead bishop c6 was played, which I think is just more ambitious, and he has ideas of playing uh, bishop a4 and hitting my rook, um, and the really annoying threat is maybe in some positions he can play like c6, and then even try to trap my bishop in with, with b5. This would be um, a, a pretty uh, <laughs> annoying idea. Um, so after some thought, I decide to pull my bishop back, bishop d3, and then um, he goes e5. Uh, which was a little bit surprising. I don't know if I was fully expecting this one, because I during the game I felt like d5 was a, a good response, and that's what I ended up doing. But now I, I feel like, okay, black is still the one who... Like, if anyone is better, it's probably black here. Okay, so the point of d5 is that if he takes, then I have bishop takes g6. Uh, he has to recapture, I play rook takes d5. I thought white is doing okay here in the game because I'm gonna play e4 in uh, e4 soon, and then maybe even try to like bring my queen to h3, and it seems like, you know, white has a uh, healthy play, but black is probably just fine anyway. I mean, he has like a rook coming to d8 and just very easy counterplay. Um, so that would have been I think close to equal. Instead, bishop a4 was played. Now I really don't want to have to like move my rook again, so at this point I I do allow the bishop trade with bishop c2, uh, takes and rook takes. Um, but here I felt this was co quite reasonable because now the structure is really changed, and now that I've gotten this pass pawn on d5, if I'm able to support it with e4 and c4, uh, then white's position just looks really good. Um, but okay, it turns out things are not so easy. Um, and I think, actually, this is something that Grischuk said in an interview a little while ago, he, uh, just talking about how chess is just a very concrete game. It's like either you're in time to achieve your plans uh, or you're not. And if you are, good. If you're not, then <laughs> sucks for you. Um, so here, black plays h6, which I think was a good move. Now my knight has to move, and um, 
it's not clear where the knight should go. Uh, because if I go to e4, I'll just get hit with f5, and then black will play e4 next move, and really shut me in. And if I play knight f3, I again didn't like the looks of e4, let's say knight d2, f5. Uh, I was thinking about a position like this, and, and it just looked like black was extremely happy here, even with a simple plan of, let's say, just bringing the knight to d6, uh, and then eventually to f7 and e5 and, and d3. And yeah, it just looked like the, the structure is, is not in my favorite at all, uh, and black is always going to have like these b5 breaks. So I wasn't too happy about that. Eventually I decided on knight h3, um, where now if black plays e4, at least I can put my knight on f4. Um, I think this is still what black should have done. At least this is the engine's choice after the game. Um, and it gives black, I think, a, a small edge here. After queen d7, I'd probably play c4 and queen a4. This is a nice move, just putting the queen here. Now he's putting a lot of pressure on the c4 pawn and... Yeah, it's kind of a tough position uh, for white. I don't have bishop b2 because black can trade and then and then take on c4. So yeah, I'm I'm just a little bit passive here. And then he can continue building up, you know, bringing in his rooks and eventually preparing some break. I mean, I think white is not that much worse there, but but black is definitely better. Um, so e4 was definitely the move here. Instead, he played knight b7. And then, okay, I knew I wanted both c4 and e4, but I didn't really know what order to do them in. <laughs> I figured since he didn't play e4 in the previous move, he probably doesn't want to. Uh, and so I played c4, um, but this was wrong. I, I should have just taken the chance to play e4. Um, because if he plays c4 himself and tries to fix this pawn, this is not such a big deal. I mean, here my pawn structure is a lot healthier. And importantly, I get f3 and, and knight f2 in. Now, this was my idea during the game, except I also wanted my pawn on c4. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think I made the right call here. Uh, so, yeah, again, he should have just played e4, knight f4, knight d6. And I think uh, black is standing slightly better. Um, I'm not sure exactly why he rejected it. I think he just wanted to play the position after knight d6, uh, e4, and f5. So strategically, it's a really interesting position. It's like white has this protected pass pawn, space advantage, but black has this perfect blockading knight on d6, and overall a very solid structure. Uh, but black also has this passive bishop on g7, which often ends up being uh, a problem. Um, nevertheless, black structure is just super good here, and, and it seems like white is the one who has to kind of defend a bit. But I was feeling pretty comfortable here after f3, uh, f takes e4, f takes e4. I felt like... I was possibly worse before, but now I'm, I'm totally okay. As long as I can keep my center uh, defended, I, I should be fine. And I felt like I had a nice setup with like knight f2, bishop e3. Um, I was thinking about some ideas of even lifting the rook, like rook d3, rook h3. But really my mindset for, for this type of position was to just try and uh, prevent his counterplay. Because I realized like it's going to be very hard for black to activate the bishop. His only idea is to maybe get some pawn break going with like a6, b5. Um, I thought he might like double the rooks here, something like rook f7. Or actually after queen e7, this was played uh, knight f2 and then rook f7. This is what I was expecting and then maybe doubling on the f-file. And then, okay, white will play like bishop e3 and I think both sides are just kind of solid here, and, and neither side can really do much without um, without creating weaknesses. Um, so this is what I was expecting, but then he really surprised me with this move, a6. And okay, the move is very logical, he wants to play for b5, but it's a, it has a big drawback in that it's really weakening um, black structure. So I um, pretty quickly saw the move bishop e3 and, and convinced myself to play it because I'm just preventing the b5 break right away because the c5 pawn will be hanging and uh, yeah just natural square for the bishop um, so he goes king h7 and now I play rook b1 and I just pile up on the b pawn um, and yeah I feel like without a6 then the position I think is very very close to equal because white will have a hard time doing much I can always try to throw in this plan with like a4, a5 uh, in this type of position, but I think, yeah, usually black is, is okay to, to defend there. 
Um, but here with the pawn on a6, it's just uh, I'm immediately putting a lot of pressure. Uh, so queen c7, a4, um, and I'm not really threatening to push a5, but it is a uh, it is an idea. Actually, here I, I would be. I think I would be potentially threatening. It depends on whether or not black can respond with, with b5 or not. I think he, he probably could actually. So, yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm threatening the move a5 or not, but uh, this move is really just about restricting uh, the break. So I, I just wanted to make sure that he never gets b5 in under good circumstances. Um, he played rook b7. I think it's quite reasonable. He wants to kind of build up with bringing the second rook to b8. So I said, go ahead, I played the move h3, um, just slightly improving my king, rook b8, and uh, queen c2. So this was another like nice prophylactic move. So I'm again uh, just putting pressure on the c5 pawn. If he pushes this way, uh, I'm going to take c takes b5, a takes b5, and queen takes c5. Uh, if we trade queens, then I get this valuable tempo on the knight, and... Um, Actually, there was a nice line here. I thought, okay, knight c4, I can just take on b5, and I'm two pawns up. Uh, but he can actually take on a4, because he's hitting b2, and um, his rook on b7 is defended. But I realized that in this position, after takes, rook takes, uh, takes, knight takes, uh, in a move like bishop, I think I was thinking b4 to keep the knight restricted. Um, this endgame seemed very pleasant for white because his knight is cut, his bishop is also kind of cut, and I have an easy plan of like knight d1, knight c3, and picking up the pawn. So I think white is just winning the pawn here, like something like king g8 might happen, knight d1, um, oh no, here actually black is in time, so I think I, I, think I misevaluated this one, because here bishop f8 takes, takes, knight c3, um, well, he can even push a3 or go knight c5, and yeah, I think if anyone is better, it's um, maybe even black, because he has the outside pass pawn, though probably white is okay too. Um, so that one doesn't seem to be working for white, but I guess I can also just take on b5 first, now that I'm looking at it, um, and I just trade everything off, and whenever black takes with the knight on b5, I'm ready to pick up the c5 pawn. And, okay, this is just a healthy pawn up for white. Whether it's winning or, or not is, you know, still unclear, but obviously just great chances. Um, so, yeah, b5 is, is stopped for black. He played the move rook to c8, um, and then I played knight to g4. So I was, I don't know, really happy with my setup. It's like my queen is super passive, but... It's defending all my pawns, and so my pieces, my other pieces don't have to do the work, and they can just kind of put pressure. Um, and with this last move, knight g4, yeah, I'm just trying to be a little bit annoying, because I'm putting pressure on e5, I'm putting pressure on h6, and I'm really hoping to induce him to play h5, because this will give up the g5 square, and then my plan was to play knight h2, and then bring the knight to f3, and then to g5, and eventually e6, where it would just be placed fantastically. Um, so at this point, after knight g4, I was definitely starting to feel very optimistic. Actually, I had been for, for the last few moves. Because it's like white is able to put this kind of free pressure. I have the um, weakness on the b-file to target. And I also felt like at some point I can switch over to the king side and try to use like a principle of two weaknesses kind of thing. Um, okay, so he played queen d8 here. And it's a tough position for black because he just has no active moves and he has to figure out how to shuffle. Whereas white can kind of put pressure in different ways. Um, so yeah, here I switch with rook f1. Uh, potentially, you know, hoping to at least introduce the idea of knight f6 check. Obviously it's not possible right away. Um, but then he goes for h5. I think he simply ran out of patience here because he didn't want to keep shuffling. Uh, but this, this works out in my favor. Knight h2 and b5. So I realized I was allowing this break, but I was um, <clears throat> definitely okay with him doing this, because once we trade everything on b5, he is kind of left with a lot of weaknesses in the position. Uh, so a takes b5, a takes b5, and I actually considered a really interesting line here with knight f3. Um, <laughs> the point is after knight takes c4, I throw in the check on g5, he plays king g8, and then I have this very interesting queen sacrifice, queen takes c4. 
I was really trying to make this work because it looks very, very promising for white. Like all my pieces are well placed. I have a threat, rook takes g7, followed by 96 check or 96 right away. Uh, and like the obvious defensive move, rook c7 also runs into 96 and, and white wins. <clears throat> so during the game, I was, you know, calculating to this position, trying to figure out whether he had a defense here. Because, you know, I want to like double on the seventh rank and then maybe play a move eventually if the bishop goes to f8, like knight h7, knight f6, and, and give mate this way, uh, among other ways. Um, I couldn't figure out for some reason what to do after bishop f6. Although after the game, Stockfish pointed out just like simple move 96 and, and black is losing the piece. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure why I missed that one, but it turned. I felt like black should have some kind of defense here. And it turns out there is one move, bishop h6, that's actually holding for black. And okay, the move makes a lot of sense. He's putting pressure on e3 uh, and the knight, of course. Uh, and white can make a draw with uh, the move rook f7. Uh, the point being whenever black takes on g5, White can take back, queen takes, and um, I think we, we give a perpetual on the uh, on the seventh rank. Oh no, sorry, this is not the right line. Um, I think we have to just give check first, actually. So if the king tries to, let's say, run away with uh, king f8, I think the engine found some line with uh, rook f7 check king e8 and d6 and this is forcing um i think this is forcing some kind of draw or maybe actually i think white has to uh take first in d6 something like this <laughs> and and then eventually gives a perpetual on the seventh rank um Anyways, case in point is, like, if black finds bishop h6, then black survives, if not, white wins. Uh, and so I made the right call by not going for it, because, of course, at this point, I still want to keep my winning chances uh, as big as possible. And so if my position is, like, better, you know, I'm playing against all these weaknesses, it doesn't make sense to go for a forced line where I might not be winning at the end. And, and that was, that would have been the case there. So instead, I just grabbed again on b5. Black played rook takes b5, we traded rooks, and knight takes b5. Um, and so we're left with this position, which I felt like was very promising for white, because he's ha he has these like new weaknesses on the king side, so I have this plan like knight f3, knight g5. Uh, and his c-pawn is double-edged. It's potentially strong, but it's also kind of a weakness, and, and he has to constantly keep an eye on it. Whereas my pass pawn is a protected passer, and so... You know, I'm not going to be able to push it um, unless, you know, like a bunch of pieces come off the board. But um, but at least it's secure and, and my pieces don't have to defend it. So structurally, white is doing well. Um, so, yeah, I play knight f3 here, wanting to go knight g5 check and knight to e6. Uh, and he goes bishop f6. I was half expecting this move knight to d4. And... Um, I was definitely considering taking here with the bishop, and then c takes d4, queen moves somewhere, and yeah, I wasn't sure exactly about this position. I felt like black probably has very good holding chances. Um, but instead, I wanted to play the move queen c4. Just keeping the position very stable, keeping the pawn blockaded, and if knight takes f3, rook takes f3, I felt like this, you know, late middle game was, was going to be very pleasant to play, because now I... Black has this like weak pawn on c5, I have a strong pawn on d5, the bishop is still passive, and yeah, it just felt like a very playable and, and pleasant position for white. Um, okay, instead, black played bishop f6, so covering g5, and um, here for, I thought for a while, because this is like move 39, we're about to hit the time control, and I had some time, I had like 20, 25 minutes, so I really took my time here, and I found... I think a really nice idea here uh, and that was to play h4 so okay the idea is very logical i'm just fighting for the g5 square but i, I thought it was quite a, a nice move because it, it was not obvious to me that that i needed to play this at all um so if black takes on h4 um my idea was to take on e5 and then i have rook f7 check coming and that's gonna be that looks very dangerous for black um so he played c4 which i think makes sense uh, and then knight g5 check. Actually, originally, 
one of my main ideas was to play bishop g5 uh, because I wanted to to keep my knight and, and trade off the bishops. Then when I, my knight gets to g5, it felt like it was just going to be um, a very nice initiative with uh, the rook coming to f7. But I couldn't actually figure out what to do after queen b6 check, king h2, and uh, bishop g7. Because if I pull my bishop back, then he goes bishop f6. Um, but somehow the move bishop e7 escaped me. Or I think I was considering this move, because now I can put my knight on g5. But it felt a bit awkward to me, you know, like bishop e7. Um, <laughs> like the bishop is just kind of floating there and, and hanging. And yeah, this, this wasn't clear to me at all. Also, after knight d4, I think the <laughs> position's not clear either. Um, so yeah, hard to figure out what, what's going on here, whether I should, should take or not. So I end up going with knight g5 check, and it's very hard to tolerate this knight coming to e6, so uh, my opponent took, I played bishop takes g5, and here I started feeling very optimistic about my position. I mean, I, I already had some intuitions before, but once we like got, got and reached this position, I was able to start calculating, I realized that white just has a, a ton of like winning ideas here. Um, well, the point is that now black's king side is, is pretty weak, and I have a strong queen, rook, and bishop that are well-coordinated uh, to attack it. Um, but also black has a weakness on e5, which is relevant, and... The, okay, I would say the only thing going for black's position is, of course, the pawn on c4 it is definitely strong at this point, and there were many lines in the game where he could have pushed c3, knight d4, and, you know, started running the pawn up the board. Um, but fortunately for me, my threats end up kind of uh, stronger here. Okay, so the queen is attacked. He spent some time here figuring out what to do with this queen. Um, if we look at a line like queen b6 check, for example, looks natural, king h2, knight d4. Um, white just kind of wins here directly with rook f7 check, king g8, and queen f2. And now I have uh, a bunch of ideas. Uh, rook f6 is, is probably uh, my main threat. Um, but if the queen moves off of the 6th si rank, then queen f6 will, of course, be devastating. Um, and, yeah, this position is just not defendable for black. Um, so he ends up going queen e8, which I think was probably the best try. Now he's covering f7, he's covering uh, g6 and the e5 pawn. Um, I took some time here. Eventually I, I decided on kind of the most natural move, rook f6. And um, so my idea is to build up with queen f2. And then potentially I have rook f7 check, followed by rook e7. It's actually not that obvious how white, you know, breaks through here because black can really consolidate his defenses. But I, I have enough ideas in the position that there's always something uh, I can do. Um, so I was mainly expecting to move c3 here, or, or knight d4 as was played in the game, uh, followed by c3. Where my idea was to play queen f2. Uh, let's say c2, and it looks like the pawn is dangerous, but this is the great thing about the bishop, of course, is that it can perform a defensive role while also staying included in the attack. So after this move, bishop c1, let's say knight d4, uh, I have this nice idea with queen e3, and I finally have a like infiltration square on h6. So there was one nice line I had to find here, but it, it wasn't too hard. You know, this is like typical uh, puzzle rush stuff. Um, queen h6 check, sacrificing the rook, but leading to a forced mate with queen h7 and, and bishop h6. Um, so once I found this line, I felt like back here, rook f6 is like starting to look really promising, because I have, like again, these ideas with queen f2, pulling the bishop back, queen e3, and trying to infiltrate on h6. Uh, okay, so black played knight d4, queen f2, and... Uh, and king g8. So again, I was expecting c3 here. Um, and I had a couple of ideas. So one of my ideas was to play um, bishop c1. And again, I want to play uh, queen e3 and, and queen h6. Um, and if black plays knight b3, which seemed like kind of the most challenging move, uh, the plan was to go d6. Then knight takes c1, uh, I push d7, and I think this was winning for white. Actually, maybe, I think rook f7 check I end up deciding was, was stronger. 
um, to force the king to commit first. So if king g8, then d7, and I think this is just uh, game over, like no move for black. Uh, and then if king h6, well, this just leads to mate with queen e3. So yeah, I think rook f7, uh, throwing this in is stronger. Because if I go d7 first, um, then takes, at least black can give the queen here. And uh, yeah, it's it's not obvious that that white is is winning here because I I don't have a way to um, to take anything with check. Actually, like, I have to make sure I don't lose here because black c pawn is strong. But okay, I can always put like queen f6 and and give a perpetual. So yeah, this is far from clear. But throw pl playing rook f7 check first. The difference is of course black hasn't taken the d pawn. So if black gives a queen here, um, then then white should just win easily with this. Um, or maybe there, there is a more accurate way, but yeah, I'm sure white is winning there. Um, so yeah, that was my plan. The computer finds um, some other interesting lines, but that was kind of my, my main winning idea. Uh, in the game, he ends up playing king g8, um, which I think, yeah, was just kind of prophylactic against rook f7, but it also gives me some time because now his c pawn is not running down the board. Uh, so I decided to improve my king as well, king h2. I think this is a really important move actually, so not only am I getting out of any lines that are like he promotes with check, and I'm kind of getting out of the way early, um, but mainly I actually open up queen g3, which no longer runs into knight e2 check, and I think this is uh, an important resource. And in fact, yeah, if he pushes like c3, bishop c1, c2 here, uh, I have this line with queen g3. Hitting the pawn on g6, king g7, queen g5, and I'm threatening that same mate again with uh, queen h6 check and, and bishop g5. And so black is, is just lost here. Um, instead he played rook c7, which um, I felt like was a good defensive move. And then again, I spent some time here trying to figure out how to break through because it really wasn't so obvious. Um, Stockfish suggests bishop h6 here, which... I definitely considered, but then after king h7, uh, rook f8, queen e7, um, I couldn't figure out, you know, how to continue here. So bishop g5, queen g7, and then finally, uh, the winning idea is to push d6, rook d7, and bishop e7. And black has no good defense to bring the rook back to f7. Uh, so yeah, this one I, I didn't really find. Uh, I, I didn't see much there. Actually, you know, it wasn't that easy to um, to, <laughs> to really find the, the winning line here. Because um, like d6, for example, also looks very tempting. But the problem here is once I push d6, he always gets the resource to bring his knight back to e6 at some point. Um, so I think I was not liking a move like rook somewhere to maybe b7. And then... Yeah, I just didn't see how I was going to break through here. Um, and he wants to just play like king g7 and, and my rook is, is kind of stuck. So finally I found the idea to play rook d6. And I'm kind of using the, the drawback principle here because his rook left the back rank. So I immediately create this thread to play rook d8. Um, and... Yeah, so one nice line here is that if he plays queen f7, rook d8 check, king h7, I have bishop f6. So, of course, a very common, like, mating uh, motive here. Um, if king g7, I have bishop f6 anyway. Takes rook g8, and uh, I'm winning the queen with check. Uh, although he could have taken on, on g8 here, queen takes f6. Uh, and I think black is really just not in time here, even with c3. Because white just can take so many pawns with check, I can take on e5 and hit all his pieces, uh, and I also have this tempo with, with d6 at some point. Um, so white should be winning here. Probably I would just take on e5, and I think it's over. Um, so yeah, after rook d6, it's hard for black to move. If um, you have king h7, I think I'll play rook d8 again. And, and of course, his queen is still tied to the uh, g6 pawn. So I'm, I'm always starting to, to take on g6. Uh, for instance, after rook f7, it's important that I can take on g6 here with check. Uh, and then I can give rook h6 check if I want. And then queen can come to g3 and we're probably giving mate here. Um, or, you know, winning the game somehow. Um, 
I was expecting rook c8, just, you know, backing up. And then I think my plan was to play bishop e3, with the idea to play queen g3 again. And then after king h7, to come in with queen g5, queen h6, and, and break through this way. Uh, okay, finally he played rook d7, which I actually didn't calculate that much. I kind of dismissed it, because I thought I could just trade and play queen f6 and kind of infiltrate. Uh, but once I got here, okay, I figured I have to calculate more, otherwise it, it could be a big mistake to trade rooks and, and simplify the position. But I realized that taking and queen f6 is probably winning the game, uh, especially since black won't be able to trade queens after that. So I took queen f6, and he were, here he was already in his second time trouble. Um, he only had like a couple minutes because he, he burned all of his time just looking for, for some kind of a defense. Uh, and he made a kind of a final mistake with queen g7, which allows white to, to win easily. Um, queen f7 would allow me to pick up on e5. I guess the most stubborn defense would be queen e8. And here I was going to choose between d6 and bishop h6. Uh, it turns out bishop h6 is much simpler. Just, okay, hitting g7. He has to play queen f7, then I can take on e5. I pick up an important pawn, his knight is destabilized, and, and I think white is winning, just because the queen and bishop here, I mean, normally queen and knight are a good combo, but here the queen and bishop are really dominating, because I have this, you know, constant mate threat on g7, and I have the d-pawn, and his pawn is always kind of under control by, by long-range pieces. Um, but, okay, nevertheless, that was still, let's say, the only way for black to keep the game going. After queen g7, white is actually able to win in a very straightforward way, um, queen takes g7, king takes g7, and d6. And my pawn is um, promoting faster than his. Uh, I think it just kind of turned out fortunate that like my bishop ends up just beautifully placed on g5, controlling my promotion square uh, and his promotion square, just kind of highlighting um, the, the power of the bishop over the knight here. And so the critical line is that after c3, d7, um, if c2, I just promote, and, and his his promotion is covered. So if knight e6, I'm in time to promote. He has to take, bishop takes c2, and I'm just in time to pull the bishop back and uh, and stop his pawn, um, which wouldn't be the case if my bishop was like on b8, let's say. Um, but here, this is just a trivially winning endgame. My king just crosses over to d2 or d3, and I pick up his pawn and, and win the game slowly. Uh, even if he somehow manages to bring his king around and, and win both of these pawns, I'm, I'm still winning because of the, the correct h-pawn. But, okay, black is, is never even going to get that close. Um, so, yeah, after d6, he resigned because he realized he's just losing uh, the piece by force. The king is also, uh, importantly, not in time with uh, the bishop covering the e7 square. Uh, and, yeah, it was uh, quite a nice finish. Um, so now I'm on four out of six, leading into uh, round seven. Uh, still four more rounds to go. I'm sure I'll get someone very tough tomorrow, uh, but I haven't checked the pairing yet, so we'll find out who that is uh, soon enough. Um, and yeah, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I hope to make more of these videos in the future as well. And uh, yeah, until next time, take care.